How are you doing folks? Well, um, you're joining me back in my garage again um, and I'm about to tackle uh, yet another gearbox. Um, I'm not going as deep into this as I did with the Passat gearbox for the camper van, but what I'm going to be doing is getting the Beatles gearbox ready to refit and uh, tidied up a bit and I want to replace the shaft seals on it. So. Um, I, uh, I had it in storage for a while, uh, basically the car is obviously disassembled and the um, gearbox was one of the things that was removed along with the engine, so um, not generally the conventional way of doing things to be honest with you, the, uh, the, the bodywork guy did the uh, engine and gearbox removal, a lot of people just removed the engine separately to the gearbox, um, but uh, in this instance he just found it handier, so that's alright, but uh, it gives me an opportunity to do the likes of the um, uh, engine mounts and the shaft seals, the um, shift, uh, the gear shift couplings, and uh, generally give it a tidy up and um, uh, change the gearbox oil and all that as well too. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at it. Now this gearbox uh, is uh, nowhere near as substantial as the Passat gearbox was. Um, it's much lighter as well physically, so it makes it an awful lot easier to move around. And um, we don't have to get into the whole modifying uh, of it, you know, there's no removing of um, material from the, the bell housing or anything like that. But what I want to do first of all is we want to remove those shafts. Um, now the, gear, the gearbox oil has already been drained, I did that, uh, I did that a couple of months ago actually. Um, I left it up over a weekend and just left the oil drain out of it. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to flush it out as well too. So um, let's start by removing those little rubber caps there. So we need to get a suitable implement to get it down without uh, damaging them. We start by just uh, trying a, a flathead screwdriver. So um, just uh, I'm going to just gingerly try and pry it, pry at it. Without, uh, there you go. It's coming away straight away. Just uh, try and take it off square because. And um, although the, the um, shafts in the Passat came out with a um, uh, with the use of a, uh, a, a basically a, you were able to jack them off these uh, these come out slightly differently and um, so uh, yeah basically that's a rubber cap off on this side so let's have a quick look and see what we're doing with here I'm gonna get a little box to put all of the bits into as we go. now it will be cleaned up afterwards. So in here we have a circlip and uh, that circlip I am going to assume needs to be removed and then um, there's a, I can actually see the splines on the top of the shaft so hopefully when we actually remove the circlip that shaft will just pull out. So so let's uh, get a circlip pliers and uh, see how we get on. Okay I don't know where the hell my circlip pliers has gone at all so uh, I have a uh, long nose pliers here with uh, two flat filed into the end of it so hopefully that'll be enough to just get it. so that's off we'll put that aside and hopefully this will just pull out yeah look at that it does happy days right right so let's uh, let's pop that aside and I can tell you now these shafts here are definitely needing replacing um, one of the things I kind of did was uh, I, I gave the outside of the gearbox, an, uh, gearbox a hazing with um, uh, plastic media just to clean it basically um, and that's left its residue around here so we need to clean up that residue um, around the shafts and that as well. I did mask it off but it goes everywhere you know I mean it is a blasting cabinet so you kind of you know, had it on a low pressure but still it's probably ill advised you know but look at uh, once we have it all Sort it out. I'm just giving the uh, giving the shaft a wipe here, um, and that's taking all of the gack off it. So I have to say, uh, even without the proper circuit pliers, um, taking out the uh, taking out the shafts from this gearbox was a hell of a lot easier than it was on the Passat box. Um, they're a little less substantial though, you know, I mean, you know, in, funnily enough in this instance they do have to take the same amount of kind of power, you know, I expect the Beatles engine will be about 120 horsepower now by the time it comes back from the rebuilder. 1914cc, uh, Engel 120 camshaft, lighting and balance bottom ends, ported, uh, ported heads, um, should be, uh, should be nice, a nice bit of fun. Um, and those of, you, those of you who are not subscribed to my channel, if you do subscribe, 
you will uh, find out all about this project. So um, yeah, basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna just give this uh, give this shaft a clean here, and um, then we'll pop out that shaft seal, and we'll have a look and see how easily the new one goes in. Okay. Um, I think that's uh, that's good enough to be honest with you. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, what I'm thinking is, is when when I'm putting the new shaft in, or the new shaft seal in, I will be able to uh, put it basically on this, and then use the uh, use the actual um, drive shaft flange to uh, tap it home without having to um, fit it first. I should be able to actually install the whole assembly together. So I think I'm going to try that. But what I need to do first of all is I need to get that old one out. So that's going to be easier said than done. Um, so let's. Uh, Try and remove some of the gack and dirt around it without it going into the gearbox. Obviously behind here is the differential, for those who don't know. Um, I was tempted briefly to actually crack, up, crack open the side of the uh, gearbox and have a look in and give a little bit of a clean out. Just take the differential uh, off. It's early days yet, I might still. <laughs> um, sometimes you discover things you don't want to discover though when you do these type of things, but uh, there again you might get on top of a problem you didn't know existed. And it's an awful lot easier to um, rectify these problems. There we go. Right, so there is actually metal inside there, that's a bit of a different construction to what I'm used to. Okay, so I know for the other side. Alright, that's obviously why it was a pain in the ass to, to get out. There's the... Uh, out. Springy part from the inside of it. Git seals are called. I think that might be because they're a git to get out. Right, so that's, that's that done. Little uh, thrust washer. Something here. Hmm. Okay, so obviously that's supposed to be there. Let's put that down. Like a little spring washer kind of thing. Um, right, so uh, yeah, next thing is to put the new one in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by the method that I was suggesting uh, by um, basically uh, using the shaft to drive it in. Let's see how that goes. From. So, new seal. There we go. Right, so what I'm suggesting we do is put this on here, like that. So that's now on the uh, that's now on the shaft, and then we can just literally tap this on. So I need uh, need something just to go across the uh, across the whole um, flange just so it, so I can tap it down evenly. This will do. Bet you've never seen anyone use a spanner like that before. <laughs> okay. So that's that in, and the last piece of the puzzle is a circuit and the phone rings. Okay, that phone call was of relevance. Um, the camper van is ready to collect, um, so uh, yeah, uh, we will be uh, popping over and collecting that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just put that circuit on there, and um, we will uh, try and get over. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Okay, so let's try and get the circlip back on here now anyway, and we will uh, 
will be done on this side once we put the rubber uh, the rubber seal back on. Um, as I said, if I had actually had the proper circlip pliers, I don't, know, I don't know where mine has gone. It's buried somewhere in the garage. Is actually where it is. I don't know. Oh, the smell of gearbox oil is atrocious. I don't know what it is about it, it's just disgusting. It smells like cat piss. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to take the diff housing off the other side. I'm going to have a look inside. Making sure the circlip is home and in the groove. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's pop our rubber seal back on. Let's just give this a little clean up. Okay, last, uh, last piece of the puzzle is this uh, little rubber, rubber cap which just presses in by hand. And that's, uh, that's the job done on that side. So let's, uh, let's flip over the gearbox and have a look and see what we're looking at on the other side. And hopefully that seal, now that I know kind of the construction of it, if you, I think I would have looked at the new seal before, but I didn't. So. Oh, well, let's take off that uh, take off that cover. It's, uh, it's held on by standard nuts. You know, I mean, it's not like the bloody um, uh, the uh, Pesac gearbox which had those torques headed bastards in. So it should be a bit easier. I'll pop off the nuts anyway. Impact gun, Ryobi, my favourite tool at the moment. I'm going to go 13 mil and we're right. Okay, so 13 mil. Dish batch wash, thanks very much. Get out and stop your neck. Okay. Yeah, there was probably a, a bonding lead or something like that that went onto these ones. That's why they're loose. So I'll just take them off for the moment anyway. I'm not going too deep in this gearbox if you know what I mean. I just want to have a look and see how everything is inside because like let's say for example there is something that's really wrong with it. We need to start looking at um, changing it. So it would be nicer to know now than to have the uh, gearbox reinstalled in the, in the car. I personally think so anyway. and get this circuit off now. I'm getting conscious of time now because the van needs to be collected as well too, so and that's half an hour away from me. And it closed at five and it's like three o'clock now, so. There we go. There we go, and that's that one out. So, right, so that's the two. Uh... Oh, look at that. What is going on? Oh, look, there's a sort of a thrust wash out of that one. Oh no, there you go, look, that goes under that. It was actually just stuck to the other one. All right, fair enough. So, we'll take off the diff housing and we will um, uh, see if we can push that out from the other side. 
and um, yeah anyway I'm gonna pick that up another time because to be honest with you um, I have to go but uh, through the miracle of editing it'll be like no time has passed at all for you guys and we're back folks welcome along to another exciting uh, segment of uh, Enfloat Gunter's a gearbox and um, anyway right so we have uh, oh there we go geez. And we'll put that away. Um, the uh, yeah, the uh, I actually took the shaft off the other side of the um, uh, the, the shaft flange off the other side of the gearbox again because I wanted to, I want to actually be able to lift out the differential. I wasn't going to originally, but then I decided, you know what? I'm going. If I'm going to take this cover off, I may as well. So there's two little lugs here which I'm gently tapping on. It's very important when you're doing this that you don't bash the, uh, you don't you don't damage the ceiling face because um, there is a it's a it's a it's a machine surface. So what we'll actually do is I'm gonna just get a little drift just to tap that with. Um, yeah, see it's going now. It is handy that this gearbox is that much lighter than the uh, Passat gearbox because, and I know I'm going on about the Passat gearbox, but that, that's my only basis for comparison. There we go. Now, let's see what's inside. Yeah. It's pretty piggy, but anyway, right, look, that's off. So let's just put that aside for the moment. And we lift out our uh, diff. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have a look at the. Jeez, that comes out. It comes out very, very easily. I want to have a look at the uh, pinion gear. Now, one of the apparently it's one of the, the kind of the Achilles heels of these gearboxes is the um, the pinion. But um, what's the matter of a pinion, isn't it? Who? <laughs> I'm here all week, folks. Try to fish. Uh, right. Um, so that's that out. Now what uh, we could do is. Um, Let's have a quick look and see. It's all turning nicely. So th this one doesn't work the same as the other gearbox and so far as there seems to be a separate input shaft. Uh, and then I'll show you now in a second. Let me just, uh, what I have to do is wipe my hands. I don't want to destroy my camera with oily hands. So uh, we'll have a look in there together and we'll see what we're, uh, see what we're looking at. Okay, so so here we are now. Um, I'll turn the light on. This camera is nice because it actually has a little light on, so it makes it handy for this kind of thing. So you can see the uh, uh, this part close to you here is the uh, the input shaft, and that's actually just coming from here. So as I'm turning that, it's going to here, and then there's a gear going across there. And then that's going in through the gearbox, and then that's your uh, pinion that goes onto the uh, crown wheel on the diff, which is here, and uh, out to the wheels. So uh, yeah, simple and simple and effective. Um, we could go down the route of taking off the uh, the back cover and inspecting everything there as well too, but. I don't know if I actually want it to be honest with you. Um, I think at this point in time, what I might do is I might just um, clean the diff. Uh, I'm not. Lo I'm looking for da damage. Let's, let's just stick it into gear. Actually, any gear will do. It doesn't go in very easily when you're. When you don't have to lever just a gear stick. Right. I tell you what, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put you guys back down on the tripod here. Yeah, the garage is in a is a disaster area because I've got about five or six different projects on all at the same time, and it really is just a home garage. There we go, now it's here. Right, so we can actually turn this around and we'll have a look just to see if there's any obvious damage or lumps gone out of the uh, pinion wheel. For a 45 year old gearbox, so it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't need to be perfect, you know. I mean, this is not a 
freshly overhauled gearbox. But what I want to do is I want to give it a fighting chance and living a little bit longer when it, and when it goes back in the car. So, just having a look here now as well too. You'll have to excuse the knees by the way folks, I mean there's not much I can do about it. I find it very hard to bend my, bend my legs if I don't have knees, so, you know, that's how you may deal with it. <laughs> It's also 25 degrees out today, so I uh, I want to try and uh, stay cool. Right, I'm going to get my little uh, parts washing uh, basin sorted out and uh, put some diesel in it and rinse all that out. Okay, there's the uh, the side cover there now with the seal down inside it. That's the inside of it. I'm after cleaning it up with a bit of diesel and a bit of um, brake cleaner. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a drift on the inside of that to knock out the seal, so um, that should be uh, very simple and straightforward. Um, so I'm going to get that done anyway, and then I will show you how the diff is looking. You know what, folks? In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's take that back cover off and have a look and see how we're looking there. I don't think I'm going to be taking the rotating assembly out of the casing because I remember at the Passat box, it was a... Well, it was a pain in the face, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to leave that engine mount on, and we need a, an extension and a 10mm socket. Uh, extension. And... Let's see, is this... This is a 10mm. No, this is an 11 <laughs> They are 11, that's weird. Okay. Well, we'll go with that then. Seeing as they're conventional nuts rather than bloody uh, torques, it's kind of egging me on a little bit. I'm kind of thinking to myself, I can do this. I can still make a bollocks of it as well too. There we go. Okay, so let's get a batch of for that one. I don't have an 11 ratchet spanner. Ah, here's ring spanner. Now this is where you take this cover off and everything inside just goes boing, boing, boing and goes all over the garage. So it's up to you guys to keep an eye on where everything goes, right? Just the one that's awkward, you know, all the rest of them are out. Well, they're loosened. So, one of the things I'm kind of wondering is, like, yeah, we'll loosen that af afterwards. Um, actually, no, you know what, I might do it now because it might be a case where it's better off having this in neutral. I need to get a, I need to grip that, pull it back up again. That's neutral. <laughs> Trying to get it to stay in neutral is tricky. Okay, so that's that, right. So, it's very sloppy. And I'm wondering, is there something actually gone inside here? This is where the, the sh uh, selector forks all kind of hook up. That's a reverse light switch there, by the way, if anybody's wondering. Um, so if your reverse lights aren't working, you may need to look at that. Um, Given that the given the treatment the engine has gotten for this car and what the bodywork is getting, I think after 45 years of reliable service, I think it's all right, it's only right that the gearbox gets at least a bit of a look at by somebody who doesn't know what the hell they're looking at. I.e. me. <laughs> but to be honest with you, gearboxes are crazy money to rebuild. Um, more expensive than engines seemingly a lot of the time. And uh, yeah. Now, right. So 
that's the that's the little hockey stick thing that everybody refers to basically when you're selecting gears. Um, so that should actually just pull out. I might pull it out and, and give it a clean. There we go. Yeah, so that that comes out. Apparently, if you can't get into gear, uh, even when the engine's off, it can be a case where the end is actually broken off this. And if it's this easy to replace, why wouldn't you? Now, I'm just looking here, there is a large bearing here. And there is a shaft here, and both of them have circ clips on them. So I'm wondering, I think I need to take those circ clips off. Um, there's a gasket on that as well too. Well, let's get our hockey stick out of the way first of all. Okay, but well, there's nothing that misses as such here. You never can, well, I'm just thinking. If I take all this out, half the gubbins is going to come with it. I think to tell you the truth, this is as far as I want to go in here. Let's just give it a bit of a spray of brake leader and put it all back together again. And um, I'm actually going to put some grease on that hockey stick. Um, I know there's beer box oil there, but uh, the um, the grease will go on the uh, on the, the actual forward and aft movement part of it. You know, the, the, the part that slides in and out of the seal. So, yeah, bit of brake cleaner there. Spruce it all up, and we'll. We'll call it at that. I don't want to go too too far too far beyond this point. I do not want to pass the point of no return or the point where I'm uh, stripping the whole gearbox. And at this rate, I think from this point onwards, I would be. The outer race of that gear that bearing is turning actually, which isn't ideal really. But anyway, remember. I am going to be uh, flushing it all out with diesel afterwards as well too. What I'll do is I have a squirty can with some uh, gearbox oil in as well too. So we'll um, we'll actually uh, we'll just put some of that on the bearings and on the shaft and everything as well too. So nice clean oil is in there. And what we'll do then is after I have that cover back on, um, we will set about uh, putting the diff back together again. And then I'm going to just fill it up with diesel, swish it all out again, and then put it up on a pair of axle stands and drain it all down. Um, and then basically once it's all kind of drained, then we can uh, we can start looking at uh, uh, filling it with um, uh, filling it with fresh gear oil. Um, Right, so let's get this over here. Get our heavy crud out of it first of all. I'm just looking here, the, uh, the, uh, the back housing probably stops that there from spinning by the time you tighten down on it. Um, this is a, I bet you have to bear in mind, folks, I'm doing this without a manual, so you know, you're probably, some of you who have experience of these are probably shouting at the, car, the, uh, shouting at the screens and that as well, too. Well, all about figuring these things out. And if it all goes pear shaped, I'll try, I'll try and get back from that point to a point where we can actually get it working again by using my old. But I, uh, I try to avoid breaking stuff. All right. Not empty. It's amazing how fast you go through that stuff. It's great stuff, but it doesn't last very long. You see the little uh, button there on the uh, reverse light switch there. So when you put it in reverse, the uh, the little uh, uh, selector moves up to there, and just gives that a push, and turns on your it turns on your lights. It's a nice little simple uh, simple solution.
I'm sure other manufacturers have found much more complicated and unnecessary, well, unnecessarily complicated ways of doing it. But uh, I've had VWs for quite a while. I've never had to replace a reverse light switch, so maybe VW got it right all those years ago. Clean out a couple of oil channels which are a bit gummed up actually. I finished the job with a bit of WD for it. It does a job, it does a good job of cleaning as well too on things. Bloody there we go. Trying to get a paintbrush bristle out of there. There we go. Yeah. I'm sure it wouldn't cause any damage and fairness, but still you don't want it in there. What's the point of stripping a gearbox only to add bits to it? <laughs> it shouldn't be there. The job is to remove foreign bodies, not add them. Okay, right now. Good enough? Good enough. Right, that's what I thought. Okay, let's get our um, let's get our, our uh, hockey stick back in. So a um, little bit of grease on that. And so here we are. LM2 multi-purpose grease. We'll do an icy just for this job. So I'm just brushing it on the uh, the shaft part of it. I'm not going mad. Just just a little smear. Okay, and that will go in. So, all right. Now, it's going to be a bit of a fiddle trying to get that in between those three uh, selectors there. So, um, Wish me luck on that one. We'll figure it out now in a minute. What I want to do is I want to get some oil onto those um, onto those bearings and shafts and that first of all. So I know it's gearbox oil in this, and it's not it really matter to be honest. A bit of engine oil in the gearbox is not going to hurt. Okay. Yeah. Just wipe it off the seal. There's a gasket there, I think. I think it'll be alright. So that's the bottom of the gearbox, and if we turn it down like this, okay, we're gonna have to fiddle around with this for a little bit. Let's get you guys moved back and you can see exactly how I'm hand fisting this into place. So, so alright. Okay, so if the. I'll just hook it. There we go. That's the job. So you just kind of hook it in before you put it all the way down again. All right, so we get our uh, little um, 11 mil uh, nuts on again. Tighten them all up in a alternating sequence so that you're not pulling down one side too quickly.
I don't have a torque value for these, so I'm just going to go with, I said, just say fully tight. Have it set to warm. Now it's set to three. That's the job. Okay. Okay, so we've kind of accessed two bearings and made sure that they were all right there, like, you know what I mean? And everything's looking good. So, um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the, uh, put the diff back in, put the cover on, put the shaft in, and fill it, with, we'll fill it with diesel, swish it around a bit, and then we'll empty it out. And then I think we'll call it that. So, I haven't put the shaft, the shaft seal in on one side yet, so. That still has to be done. I'm just gonna rag and just wipe out some of the ganky looking gear while it's leaked out from its nether regions. Okay. All right, right, now, so let's put the diff in next. You haven't seen that yet. I'm quite happy with how well it turned up. Actually, we did more than two bearings if you consider the ones on the diff as well. Pretty clean. I'm happy with that. Okay, so it goes in like this. Okay, so that's the diff in. Now we can put our diff housing on. The side housing. That's this lad here. Should go on like, um, no, not like that. Uh, there. There's no ring on the inside. Of it. In actual fact, what I should do is put, put a little bit of um, oil on that O ring, or something just to help it seal up. Uh, just a little bit of gear oil. Should do the trick nicely. Uh, where is my oil can? Oh, I put it back. Jeez, that's very unlike me. I actually put it back where it belongs. Right, okay. Bit of oil on the bearing won't hurt. That's that. Okay. And this. Yeah, it's very important to make sure this goes down square because if you, if you kick it off the center it'll you'll, you'll end up ripping the o-ring off and I don't have another one of these o-rings I can't afford to do that. A gentle tapping stick, i.e. a rubber mallet. Or in this case, what comes to hand is a plastic hammer, so we'll use that. Okay. So let's get some nuts on there. Let's 
So each of these has a a washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Okay, I remember there's actually two of them that don't have, um, uh, they don't actually have uh, washers on them because of the fact that there's a, uh, I think there's like a bonding lead that goes on them or something like that, so I think it's these two here. We'll, uh, we'll find out at a later stage, we can swap them over when we're actually refitting it, it's not really a big deal. So, um, for the moment, let's just leave them where they are. Okay, so I need a 13mm socket. Stick this onto one. Yeah, put it on three. So that's that done. Now let's get the shafts in. Um, this one needs a seal still, so let's put our spring washer in first of all. And um, we get our uh, thrust washer in uh, the other way. Those kind of faces with the curved side facing up uh, toward, or out towards the, um, the drive shaft flange itself. So uh, we will we'll, we'll get a um, we'll get a new seal now and pop that in. And a squirt of oil. That goes like that, and then so we have the uh, seal there. Now it's literally just going to go down like that, and we're going to send it home with our socket and a hammer, which is here. Okay, right, so that's the, um, the groove exposed for the uh, set clip, which I will actually give a bit of a wipe to.
Okay. So that's our circle clip on, on that side. And we need to put a little rubber cover on. That's our rubber cover on. Now let's flip it over and put the bit, put the, the shaft in the other side. Eagle eyed viewers amongst you will remember that I actually did put in the shaft seal on this side already. So uh, now it's just a case of literally just tapping the. Uh, it just clips into place now. That just literally just dropped in like that. Ah, shit. Sorry, no, hang on. Don't forget that. It's a little spring washer. And that goes in here. I knew it was too easy. There. Now. And now we put our circle clip in. Do our trick with the socket here just to make sure that goes down. Okay, so now we have both set clips on, both shafts in, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a rubber cover on here. It's actually got a bit of metal in it, it's not only rubber, there's a little metal plate in it and it's just covered in rubber. Okay, so that's the shaft in now, and what we're going to do is, I'm going to turn it on its back, I'm going to take the drain plug out, and I'm going to fill that up with diesel, and I'm going to switch it around and I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to let the diesel just permeate all of the crevices and bearings and everything like that, and clean all the gunk out. But first, we do any of that, need a suitable socket for taking it out. I already left it loose because obviously uh, there's no gear oil in it yet. So pop that in there and diesel and a funnel. That's what we need. There's your funnel. Here. Put a couple of levers in anyway. Diesel is good because it, it, it's it's oily and it's not as likely to go on fire as petrol is. You must remember to drain that out of there. Obviously, it's not going to stay in there. Show a little bit more in. These are cheap at the moment. The last time I saw it, one twelve point nine. One euro twelve cent point nine. Okay, that's great. So pop our drain plug back in and we'll switch that about. There and all right. Now here's where the fun begins. Get everything out of the way. By the way, a, a tip for the uh, a word to the wise: um, if you happen to be changing the gearbox oil in the in the car, um, always, always make sure that the, drip, the fill plug will come out before you remove the drain plug, because there are so many times that the, um, the fill plug just won't come out and um, if you're after draining your gearbox oil and you can't get the fill plug out to put fresh gear oil into it uh, well you're taking the gearbox out and uh, that's no fun whatsoever so uh, yeah uh, especially if you only intended to do a service on the gearbox so. Oof. 
leaking out of somewhere anyway. Obviously a vent. Vent at the top. It's great for my back. Okay. Just stand it up on the end. On this end. The forward end, remember, on it. The deep foot. Rear engine. and everything here. Stick it in gear and make sure that all of the gears are rotating inside. Doesn't, doesn't go into gear very easily. But. Give it a little tap. That's doing a great job now. Swishing all the crap around the side. Actually, no, that would be probably more like the first, I'm just thinking, because as I'm rotating these slowly, the input shaft is turning quite quickly. So. Now, you'll notice I haven't taken the engine mounts off, and that's simply because of the fact that I'm not 100% sure yet if the uh, new engine mounts I have are of a good enough quality. You know, I mean, I haven't seen them yet, so. I'm sure they're fine, but at least these ones are on the gearbox at the moment, and I know they're reasonably serviceable with a bit of life in them. So, failing all else, I can just leave them on. But uh, I don't obviously want to. Uh, and I actually bought a new forward mount as well too. So, full set of full set of mounts, uh, and I have a new gearbox cradle bracket on the way as well too, which actually was quite hard to source because it's for a late beetle rather than an early beetle. Okay, let's get a couple of axle stands and drain that oil out. Okay, it's up on axle stands now, so I'll get my little drain drain uh, uh, pan, wherever it's gone. Um, drain it small, I can use it as big as I'd like to use it. Ah, there it is. In amongst all the crap that's in my garage. I'm fully convinced of it if I had a bigger garage, I'd just have more crap. Alright, get that out of here. Now, we need to give the, uh, give the drain plug another dug it. Okay, and put this on here. So I had the plastic bag as well for folks. But Jesus Christ, that did go everywhere, didn't it? diesel everywhere and um, I think that's basically as much as I want to do on this gearbox the only other thing I'll probably do is um, 
put a little bit of grease on the, uh, actually, you know what, no. I am going to ring VW spares and see if uh, it's too late. I have an order in with them already, but I'll see if there's a possibility of getting a uh, starter bushing for this. And while the gearbox is out, I'll replace the starter bushing because um, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a primary line on the back. Uh, but it's a handy job when you have it um, when you have it on a pair of axle stands like this. The uh, starter bushing, I'll explain it to you now, is basically um, the starter bo the starting motor on a Beetle is only uh, supported on one end, and the other end is uh, there's a bro uh, phosphor bronze bushing inside and there, which it goes the uh, other end of the starter shaft goes into, and um, they often wear. So uh, well, now what I could do is I, I have one or two choices. I could either grease that one and hope for the best, or I could change it now. Personally, I think changing it now would be a better option. Um, well, I can just grease it. Ah, we'll have a think. Anyway, once I have that done, what I'll probably do is I'll actually refit the starting motor then. And um, that means that the gearbox is basically complete and ready to go into the car. And, um, we, where, well, obviously I have to put the gearbox cradle bracket on and uh, bolt it up to the, um, bolt it up to the, the chassis, uh, chassis rails. But um, yeah, I think that I'm pretty happy with that now, to be honest with you. Good day's work on this gearbox. Two new shaft seals, all cleaned and flushed, inspected. Everything's looking reasonable enough inside it. And um, new uh, topable fresh oil now, and we will be in business. Um, so uh, yeah, look, uh, I think we'll, um, we'll leave it there for the moment. And um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, we will... Uh, uh, we'll con we'll continue on the, uh, the the Beetle project over the coming months. Um, I'm hoping as kind of COVID nineteen restrictions are lifted, that I will have more of an opportunity to go out to the um, the the workshop where the uh, body work has been done. I have all of the brake parts there, and have all the bits to uh, to install for the gearbox. Um, I have new shifter uh, shifter bushes and all that as well too. Um, and uh, then I'll be going up to uh, Armagh to collect the engine from Bug Bits. Um, who have done a fantastic job on the engine and I am so looking forward to taking this for a spin. I really, really am. Uh, it's just unfortunate the way things have kind of worked out that it's all been delayed, you know, I mean, but that's just the way things, uh, just the way things pan out. So, um, yeah, um, as I said, hopefully in the coming months we will uh, we'll be able to progress this. So look, thanks for watching and um, I'll talk to you soon.